these are the micro meetups. Uh, ChicagoCreative.org is where you can find out about all the rest of them. Um, so these are quick, informal, fun weekly sessions to connect and learn cool new things and meet awesome people like Jen Ross, who's doing one today. Um, Yay! Uh, I'm gonna. I'm also gonna mute everybody for a minute here. So let me do that. Okay, except for uh, Jen, you'll have to unmute yourself when you're ready to talk. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to unmute yourself at any point, uh, you just have to do that. You can hit the space bar too if you want to uh, unmute yourself and just say something real quick. Um, so uh, coming soon, we have iPhone photography, uh, some apps for that, virtual filmmaking with the lovely and talented Jeff Sweeten, who is here right now. Uh, journaling for artists with Stephen Fisher was just announced. Uh, creative word games with Alicia Dale and some photo editing stuff and other cool things. Uh, the cool things are that you guys can do a micro meetup just like this. Uh, so you send me an email and I will just rope you into all kinds of exciting things uh, like I did to all these cool people. Um, so I just put my email in the chat if you want to send me an email about doing one of these. Um, and so that takes us to it being time for Jan Ross to do her cool stuff. So I'm going to give you control of all the things and you know, it's crazy. <laughs> control of the things to do the stuff. Exactly. Um, sorry, I, I was trying to avoid this glare from these lights behind me, but um, hi, uh, I'm Jen Ross. Some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, so what we were going to do this workshop on is sewing paper. Um, I'm, I guess I'm a mixed media artist now and I got my BFA back in 2005 studying watercolor and creative writing and ceramics that I was really bad at. Susan can vouch for that. <laughs> um, and my process has just transformed over the years. And I found myself working in paper in all different ways. Um, but specifically, I fell in love with this, this process of collaging. And um, I guess I think now in hindsight, I can recognize this way of, of connecting paper and adhering these pieces together to create these almost ironically whimsical images um, is kind of a reflection on my, my personal need for control and my struggle with anxiety. I'm now an art therapist and um, I've done a lot of self-reflection lately. <laughs> um, but, you know, as I was as I was kind of coming to terms with graduating from my, my undergraduate work and being a watercolor painter, um, something just didn't sit right with me. So I just, I kept trying to play with my style and what I was doing, which one day led me to just pick up a piece of paper and I had some, some random paper lying around and just started to cut it apart and turn it into this collage. And I started to, you know, put the pieces together, but I was never, I could never find the right adhesive. And I'm sure you guys also have experienced this struggle with adhesives. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, it was either warping paper or it, it left texture or something like, it just wasn't, it wasn't working for me. And then it was actually when I was in graduate school that I had to do something like pick three materials out of a closet just to, you know, play a part in like a role play and to make some art. And for some reason I started stitching this paper and I was like, that's it. That's what I need to do. That's what's missing from my work. I need to sew it together. It will be so like adhered. It will be smooth. It's all within my control. Um, and there's no adhesive that can dry, nothing can flake. And I started doing it and it's just, it's, it's become kind of a passion of mine. 
And I say kind of because it really was for a while and now I'm kind of experimenting more and more. Um, but in the little blip that was written, I do think the connection between process and product is, is really important to me. And it, like if, I'm, if I don't love what I'm doing and I'm not having fun doing it, I can't do it, even if I love the product. And this act of making all of these tiny repetitive stitches is just really cathartic for me. Um, it might drive some people just up the wall and it's not for everyone. Um, but I would love to share that with you today. And I have put together some pictures to show you maybe a little bit about my history, a visual, um, a visual representation of a, you know, my history that I'm sharing with you. And, you know, and we can kind of go from there. Like I said, some of you might have heard it, like this is my first one. I haven't seen anybody else present on this and I'm not good at technology. If anybody wants to jump in, if you've got questions, if you've got suggestions, you know, that's great. <laughs> I'm open to it anytime. Um, and then I have some materials to, to do a little demo if you would like to see it. And um, whoever it was that had asked before we got started here, thank you. I hadn't thought about it, but as we do the demo, if you would like to follow along um, and try it for yourself, um, I would say all you really need are, you know, a couple scraps of paper, a needle and some thread, a scissors, glue stick if you've got it. Um, and most of that is even, you know, you need the needle, you need the paper <laughs> and something to sew it together. Dental floss could work, like whatever you've got. Um, but yeah, so we can do that. Um, anybody have anything before we switch to some pictures? Um, I'll, ju I'll just say yes, if people have good. questions, um, you can put them in the chat and I'll read it and tell Jen about it because she may not look at them. So, um, yeah, the little chat bubble just popped up and I was like, what is that? Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, just post them in there. I'll, I'll keep track of them for you. So don't worry about having to follow all those. I, I know when I do these and little bubbles pop up, it's like, ah, <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> what happened? Okay, cool. So last night I put together some pictures in a little folder. Oh, it's still there. Success. I can do this. Thank you for your patience. Wait, nope. I got this. I got this, you guys. I got it. I promise. Talk amongst yourselves or not. That could be really distracting. You can do it. <laughs> okay. Success. Pictures. Okay. Can you see this? Great. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Perfect. I'm just going to like pat myself on the back here for a second. Okay. So this is T-Bone. Um, T-bone is the first collage that I made. This was the, I randomly picked up a piece of paper and some scissors and just started cutting, um, which clearly it was more than one piece of paper. I do believe this was all origami paper and I'm guessing it was probably just a glue stick at the time. And so this is, this is kind of where I started working with paper. Um, I've always had this kind of whimsical style. I just like organic shapes and, you know, going definitely beyond the skeletal system. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, this is kind of where it all began. I, there we go. And then over the years, like I just, I basically gave up um, essentially all my painting and solely was working with paper. Um, this is a self-portrait that I did and just to give you an idea of scale, I think this is maybe six by eight inches. Um, and here I've, I've kind of moved more into colored drawing papers. 
primarily. Um, but the level of detail definitely started to change for me and experimenting with different papers, like you can see the rice paper and um, yeah, just, I don't know. I just really liked cutting these tiny pieces, figuring out how to put, a, put them together, but you can see maybe where, uh, where some of these tiny pieces especially would be really hard to adhere because they're so fine. Um, this one is called Candy Naps uh, and was made after I was at a friend's house and I think I was, they were, I don't remember exactly, but I was, I was with some friends and they just kept like feeding me candy. I have this incredible sweet tooth and like it was just gummy worms and popsicles and all of these things. And I was just so happy. And I was like, I'm in my happy place, you guys. And, and so um, I don't think I actually dreamt about it that night, but it inspired me to make this. And it is representational of kind of the place that I was at, but it was a lot of fun. Um, and I, I threw this picture in here just to kind of show again, the scale that I was starting to work at. I love, I love detail. I love like, if, if I have this, what can I add to it? And kind of this compulsion to fill space. Um, I'm so envious of people that can work really abstractly and loosely and just like let things flow. Um, where I'm so rigid in my work and yet it feels so good. I want that, that like hyper control. Um, so this was, this was a number nine or six that was a commission for um, a, a new baby that was joining somebody's family. But, uh, but I think as, as we get further into like the stitching of paper and you can see how these tiny pieces, again, are hard to adhere, but also like the process in finding this hyper, hyper focus and control of manipulating paper so small and then kind of having to step back from that. Also, look at how dry my hands were. Wow. Don't look, maybe. <laughs> um, so here's, here's one of the, um, it's an earlier piece that I did that I, when I started stitching things together, it was um, an experimental, uh, experimental, excuse me, diptych that I made. And it was zebra one and zebra two. And I think I did this in 2016, right after a trip to Tanzania. And um, I've never worked solely like abstract. There's always some, some sort of representation and this was really kind of my my first delving into that. So here I was just like, why do I have to why do I have to be making something? Like my the part that I love the most now is this sewing and just like putting together these shapes and colors. So I, I pushed myself in that direction. Um some of the pictures or a lot of the pictures you'll see going forward are kind of at this angle because I just I really love the texture that happens, which is something that doesn't, you don't get when you are using adhesives to make a collage. You know, here you can see what is adhering and it offers like this, this textural quality that not only is visual, but I always encourage people to touch my work as long as it's not behind glass. <laughs> um, but I love, I love keeping things open so that you can feel that. And there's just something so satisfying and calming about, you know, just that roughness in the paper. Because again, these are primarily um, color drawing papers, but then that softness of the fiber. And I like that contrast quite a lot. And then here we've got more, you know, these organic shapes, but also this really you know, tight rigidity of the stitches that also needs the balance of how much pressure you're using. Like you don't, you can't have too much tension, of course, or the paper will buckle or rip. Um, 
And so it's learning about the papers that you're using and you know how, how far to pull so that it's on there, but also not ripping the paper. Um, and how thick of a thread or a string you can use without damaging the paper or you know, for some, maybe that would be an effect that people would really like. Um, so this is, this is Zebra. Um, I wanted to show a picture of my old studio. This isn't my studio anymore. I recently moved um, and I don't have things quite set up the way they used to be yet. <laughs> um, but I think this is just a really fun example to show how like, how my process ended up working for itself because you know connecting all of these these pieces and in, in the collage um you know there's they're so intricate and i don't work large at all um so i needed to have everything like right at hand and something else i learned <laughs> really quickly is that any sort of breeze and the work is gone, like any sort of air movement and, oh, where did that piece go? And then I'm like crawling on the floor. So I don't, I don't like to throw anything away. Like no scrap is too small to be reused for something. So I set up this, this spectrum system in my studio and I was renting at the time. And luckily my landlord didn't, didn't hate me or charge me when I moved out for the couple hundred nail holes I put on the wall for each individual spool of thread, which this is a bit dated. By the time I left, it was much larger. <laughs> um, but it was really convenient as far as just like, I've always struggled, you know, I've been working with paper since 2006. And just, I've always had this issue with storage and how do I, how do I keep things handy? And you can kind of see under the desk, I have these like containers for papers of different sizes. But for me, it's just like, it gets too cumbersome. I want like, I want things right in front of me, easily accessible. And this was such a fun way to do it too. And I can just like reach up and grab and whatever. Um, and then it was also, you know, good for the environment. Don't throw anything away. You can always reuse that. So this is a piece I did a few years ago. If it has a name, I don't remember. Honestly, I don't think it did, um, but kind of experimenting with that representational and the abstract in a way that I hadn't necessarily done before. And this piece was bigger. This is 11 by 17, I believe. Um, but yeah, just just trying to combine those two things. I loved I love the feeling of just connecting the the colors and shapes, but I'm there. It felt like again there was something missing that that representational component. <laughs> um, but there was something lovely about her. Just it reminded me of just like taking a nap in the spring. Now I kind of want to go do that. <laughs> um, this is. I want to talk about this piece because this is a really good example that I have photos of kind of step by step and also um, I don't know what it says about me but again that that act of process versus product I love creating things far more than I like having the completed work um, sometimes I wonder how creative I am because I, I see other people's work and I'm like oh I just I want to recreate that but kind of like in my style like I guess I judge myself and think that maybe I'm I'm lazy or because I, I don't want to think of original ideas I just want to produce the art um but I found this artist and he is in southwest Michigan ironically I found him randomly out of nowhere and now it's been a few years since I've talked to him and so I feel kind of guilty but his name is Sam and his last name might be Morrison, which I think it is. Yes, it's Sam Morrison. Um, but I saw him on Pinterest randomly and I, I saw these faces and I was like, oh my gosh, I love these. Like, I want, I want to make this out of paper. And so I found his website. I reached out to him and I was like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. I'm looking for somebody to collaborate. 
Also, you always have to be drinking a beer in the studio unless you don't drink for whatever reason you choose not to drink. That's totally fine. <laughs> um, so a lot of these pictures will have my beverage of choice in the corner. Um, but so I reached out to Sam and I was just like, hey, would you ever want to collaborate? And he was all about it. And so he sent me some files and I, I took a liking to this one um, because it reminds me of Sam Elliott. And it's not intentionally supposed to be Sam Elliott, but, uh, but I just liked it so much. So I took the files and I sent them over to FedEx and had them blown up. And this is the largest paper cut that I had done to date. Um, so they printed it out for me and I cut around the edges of the outline. From there, I cut everything out inside so that I could trace the pattern and pick the color scheme that I wanted and just trace the pieces. <clears throat> Excuse me, which, uh, which seemed a little fraudulent, but also since I was collaborating, made sense. Um, it also took a lot of stress out of the process for me, which was great. Um, so this is, this is early and you can see I traced it so I knew exactly where each piece was going to go to honor the integrity of the original drawing. And, and started working from there. And so this is 18 by 24. Um, and and then here's the, that close-up picture that I like to show the texture. And you can kind of see the, <laughs> I'm pointing. Can't you see where I'm pointing? <laughs> um, you can see some of the pieces that hadn't been adhered already, like with the stitching or kind of coming loose. Um, but mostly this is just to show texture. And then after I finished sewing all of the pieces together, this is, this is where I ended up. So I put it on a piece of white paper and then I thought, okay, what am I going to do with the background? And again, this is kind of where I started adding, adding to my process and thought, well, if I like stitching the paper so much together as an adhesive, why not just stitch the paper for aesthetic value? And made this pattern to put in the background and cut out the little cactus um, and kind of went from there. So here's a, here's a close up of, you know, the drawing that I put down and just stitching right onto that, that sheet of paper and then incorporating the collage over it. Um, I guess taking that step inspired me to just keep pushing like okay I've done this and this now how can I take this to the next level and I have to say this is a really personal really personal piece for me that is not yet finished and I don't know <laughs> if it ever will be um, but I don't I don't have a close-up picture of it and since my move I'm not entirely sure where it is um, but this definitely incorporates that the stitching as aesthetic as well as stitching um, for function and then incorporating some some really different types of paper. Um, I'm saying um a lot, I'm sorry. But, but there was something about this and using the contrast stitching that really stood out to me that I thought would be interesting to share with you guys just to show the process of like you know it can be it can be something very simple or it can be you know just a little addition here or there you can use it functionally or aesthetically um but it it's a needle and thread and so obviously it can be used with just about any surface so yeah we typically think of sewing with cloth but not just maybe these traditional papers, but if you can see the red fingertips, that's like, um, it's like fishnet paper. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's a super cool origami paper that I found, but it's, 
it's just like little lattice work and it's super fine. Um, so it almost looks fabric on its own, but incorporating these different textures was really successful. And it's kind of a painful piece, but also something that I really appreciate because it, it pushed me beyond um, kind of my comfort zone, I guess. Um, again, this is, this is another example of like taking that only more to an extreme, really pushing the stitches for their aesthetic value. Um, at this point, I got involved with the Guild of American Paper Cutters and had been pretty influenced by some of the traditional work that I was seeing amongst other members and my own Polish background. And so this piece is nine and a half by 11. Again, to give you an idea of scale and intricacy. Um, and so any black line you see, those are just stitches and then everything solid is paper. Um, but what I think is super cool, oh, here's like that texture shot. What I really love is the back of these pieces. And sometimes I, um, Sometimes I really debate to display them backwards or forwards because I really, there's just something so satisfying about it to me and I kind of like the messiness. Um, so I've, you know, I've kind of played around with different ideas about framing, you know, double glass or something so that you could really experience the whole thing. But I think it's also really satisfying just to kind of see see the messiness that's behind all of those intricate little stitches, which again goes back to that process versus product and the way we present ourselves versus how we actually feel and being able to see inside of it. Um, so I thought that would be fun to share. And then, you know, COVID times, we all need to make some extra cash or like things to do. Um, just like little projects here and there. I threw in a couple of pictures here of um, simple, simple projects, like different ways to use this, maybe in a more craft oriented way. I, I'm very open and accepting of my art being based in craft and I'm totally fine with that. I absolutely adore craft and think it has a lot of value. Um, and being able to recognize craft as art is something that I really enjoy. So this is an example, like this is just a small piece of art that I gave to my old roommate as a birthday present. And this is on a um, four by six index card. That's the white behind it. I like to do a lot of things on index cards because they're thin enough. It's easy to put layers on top of. Um, it's a nice standard size. And here's kind of an in process piece that I did. A little off kilter, but I think this was also about four by six. Um, but being able to use them as greeting cards, you know, in mixing, mixing your media here. This one's a little kitschier than I would normally go, but uh, this one has some beads attached to it or a piece of felt. And, you know, like being able to play around with these different textures, I, I often really wanna add sequins to things and really kind of go that direction, but I've, I haven't let myself go that far yet. <laughs> I feel like that might happen somewhere in like my 70s. <laughs> Um, here's another example, just something very simple, doesn't have to, you know, be super, like overly committed like some of the other pieces I've shown you, but again, you know, simple ideas for greeting cards that, that can be, you know, shared and really appreciated, um, just for their handmade qualities and a good excuse to use paper scraps or just experiment with shape and color. Um, these I cheated a little on. These are bookmarks that I absolutely love. I had so much fun making these, but I had these, these little scalloped um, ovals that I had acquired for something. And I found this paper at Hazel, 
in Ravenswood, like over on Montrose. If you don't know Hazel, you should. It's great. Hazel is awesome. Um, Oh my God, it's so fun. <laughs> but so I found this paper there and I was just like, oh, this is like, I have to buy this. This is so great. Um, but I never knew what to do with it. So I started making these bookmarks out of it and, you know, just sold them for a couple of bucks to people. Like the design is not mine, um, but just another way to use the process of stitching paper to kind of amplify the creative quality of a really simple quick project um, and there are so many cool papers out there with amazing artwork already on them that I don't know maybe it's just me I have a hard time thinking of what I would do with that but uh but for me this was a lot of fun um and this is a four by six four by six index card of just stitching so this is a line drawing I did and just stitched it as an experiment, you know, just again, trying, trying new things and seeing what it looks like to, to draw with a needle. Um, and this was a takeoff of that as well, you know, and you can see the obvious transition that has happened here and incorporating all of the different styles simultaneously. Um, trying to go for that looseness that I so admire in other people and I do enjoy this piece but it's definitely not it's not where I want to spend my time um I like I like the the intricacy and the rigidity of and the control of other things that I do um and I've often thought about going back and using this face the same face to recreate um another piece only more defined like I've done the other ones. There's also another, a second piece to this that is just rain, it's a stitched in rainbow thread um, and that was pretty fun. This is my most recent stitched piece and it lives at Wesley Place, part of Chicago Methodist Senior Services. I was commissioned to do this by our executive director of the place that I work because um, it's in Andersonville. They wanted something that was fitting. And this has been my largest and most intricate piece of original, like solely Jen Ross work. Um, this is 18 by 24 and again incorporates the kind of stitching as aesthetic and for functional purposes. I was gonna bring it home with me so I could show you the real thing, um, but I forgot it at the office. <laughs> so I think that's all as far as pictures go. Yes, that's it. <laughs> so that's my PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> um, hey, how do, you, how do you cut the paper? Is it they're using scissors or exacto, or what are you doing with that? It depends. So I will, I will use both. Um, my favorite scissors to cut paper are the Fiskars sewing scissors. And I know it's so bad for them, but I only use them for paper really, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I really like using those. And I have a variety of X-Acto knives and blades that I use for more intricate pieces. Um, kind of just depending on what I'm feeling and what the piece calls for. So, and, and when I say piece, I mean like each specific piece that I'm working on. So when, when I'm working, I have, you know, a few pairs of scissors and my different exactos, like all of my supplies right on hand. So if something is too small, I can try a swivel blade or I can, you know, switch one scissors for another. That said, are there any other questions or anything before we do a little tutorial? How long does it take for you to do one of those pieces? Oof. <laughs> a while. Um, it, it's, it's kind of hard to say because the way you stitch will determine 
the time that it takes, but just because I'm stitching by hand, the nature of that is already a slow process and trying to make sure that I'm not bending the paper um, and you know causing damage to anything also kind of slows things down. But um, I'm trying to think of an example. And that's also why I showed the smaller pieces too, because those are obviously way less of a time commitment, especially if this is something that you'd like to try. I would definitely start small instead of large. Um, but it'll take me months to finish a piece. Some, But again, like I work full time, so unfortunately I'm not able to just you know, hide out in my studio for a full work day. So it's hard to, to tell how many hours exactly. That makes sense. I like that little penguin. Did you say the penguin? Mm hmm Oh. <laughs> I was like, Maybe it wasn't a penguin. <laughs> it's a, a well, it was a bird. Because I think it had a nest, maybe not. I don't know. But... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Emma Jane. You're welcome. <laughs> um, you mentioned earlier a Guild of American something. What was the guild? The Guild of American Paper Cutters. They're based out of Pennsylvania, and we are international now, um, but it's um every time a little like bubble pops up it's so distracting um yeah it's an organization of roughly 300 members it's real small and just paper cutters primarily across the u.s that you know share ideas and experiment promote each other um every two years there's a really cool like four day conference all about paper cutting. Um, and there's different like classes you can take and demonstrations and presentations. And it's, it's really awesome. And um, I'm not pushing here, but like membership is like 40 bucks a year. And it's, it's kind of a cool thing. So if anybody here is a paper cutter or a collagist or just a paper artist at all. It's a it's a really nice community of people to join. You're amazing. You're absolutely amazing. Thank you. I didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> I've been cheerleading you this whole time. <laughs> Go like, oh my God, she's fucking amazing, this girl. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> it's my first Zoom. It's my first Zoom meeting. So I'm, you know, I'm learning, but you are so cool. Basically, me I, too. So thank you for. Okay, you're awesome. You're really, you really, is, really, and you're so like, delightful. You're so fun. She is. Like, oh. is. Oh my god, so fun. Can so you see nice. the insecurity in my face or something? No, I'm not like sweating now. <laughs> not. You're super cool, chick, and you're so talented. And I'm thinking, you. like, wait, did she? I missed the beginning because I moved. I, I, whatever. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I was so excited. <laughs> I love you guys. I talked to Michael. I'm like, Michael, I can't get on. There's a little Holly. Just you'll you'll figure it out. So um, you're so well, good. I, oh I really God. really appreciate. It's hand it. done. It's all hand done, not by machine. Oh yeah, I I don't. Talking I don't like Talk. to do anything digitally. I don't want to do anything by machine. People ask me wow. all the time why I don't just wow. start using a machine, and I've seen people who do sew paper and do somewhat similar work by machine. And it's yeah, great, it's so they do beautiful. awesome, they've got their thing, but it's just not mine. Um, and I, I do everything by hand, my whole career. Everything I did has been by hand. And I have to scan in and send, but uh, when I saw you work, I'm like, holy fuck, this girl, like, she, she can sit still. <laughs> oh yeah, I can sit real still. Beautiful, <laughs> oh my God, you're like awesome. Anyways, I have no idea. I'm probably out of line with my behavior, but anyways, I just had to cheer you on because I have been the whole time, and oh, then I realized, oh my gosh, I was on that mute thing. I don't know. You're on Jen, my I phone. really liked when you talked about the, the back of the piece, and it reminded me of like oh, the back yes. of the circuit board, where all the components oh. sort of stick through. Um, 
and Susan and I were, Susan was saying, oh, I bet that feels really nice. Um, oh, it does. It's the, so the soft. Out the back. <laughs> Did you watch me do this when you lifted it, like when you showed the back of it? I was I cannot see it. anybody like, but I... me. And so it's like, it's, it's really disturbing because it's just me and then the little uh, picture in the bottom is me uh, and I, it's making me real uncomfortable. Oh, <laughs> uh, well you did well, really good. Well, I was reaching out and trying to touch your pieces. Just, it's, uh, it's very just cool and I really awesome. like the back. That was awesome. Thank you. I, I, love I, the was back. A, uh, yes. I was at an art show, uh, an art exhibit where they had a, pe a stitched piece on cloth that was like the I forget what it was. It was like the the Bill of Rights or something. And it was like a foot by 10 feet and they had it mounted so you could see the underside of it too. And so it was like the same thing you're talking about. It was really, people really liked it. <laughs> I just figured out how I can see you guys. Here we get to see are. you. <laughs> Hi. Gallery <laughs> view. You have faces. <laughs> Yay, we love you. <laughs> this makes me so much happier. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, it, the piece with the back, the that I showed the back, it almost got to the point that there was so much stitching, like it just feels like cloth. Like it's so satisfying and also kind of surreal that you're like, but wait, why is it it's so soft? It's so soft. <laughs> so soft. Jim, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to jump in, but I I'm sorry I missed the beginning. And so the certain threads you do, certain needles you use, and it's all paper, correct? Yeah, I haven't actually wow. talked about specific supplies wow. that I use. Um, I think that's they're not. Go for I it. Do the demo, or right, right? Yeah. So. So I've got some some stuff here to do a little demo. Um, oh, I don't know how we are on time. I tend to ramble incessantly. Um, we love this. <laughs> Emma Jane, she was my intern. Sure, you're, you're <laughs> time, so show whatever you want. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. So I'm going to do this thing where I flip my screen. Okay, I did it. <laughs> Yay. And wow. here's my little setup that I have cool. to show you guys. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I put aside for tonight. And last night I even practiced how to stitch in front of a camera. It was very confusing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh. So this here is one of my handy dandy four by six index cards. I do not care about material quality at all. Um, I know being a paper artist that everything that I make is very, you know, it's very prone to getting damaged. It's going to decompose. I kind of like to think of it as an extension of my death positivity, like, and the mild amount of Buddhism that I pretend I understand that like nothing is permanent. Um, and so I would rather create with what I have and what I acquire than to just focus on material quality and resisting that sort of decomposing. Um, so again, four by six index card here. All of these threads have been donated to me by various friends and family that Oh, my grandma died and she found, like, we found this. Can you use it? I've plucked some of these from my mom's own sewing drawers that are 50 years old. You know, if I need something on the fly, I'll pick up one of those, like, Walgreens, four bucks for six spools. Like, why not add it to the collection? Um, my, my Fiskars that I was talking about is downstairs and I was too lazy to go get it. So I have a backup little embroidery scissors here. And then just, you know, standard school issue, Target, whatever, whatever scissors I can find around. Um, I didn't dig out all of my exactos, but my favorite blade to cut with is, or my favorite tool to cut with is this, oh, I'll even like, I don't know how blurry this is for you guys, but it's from Fiskars. And for a lot of intricate cutting, 
Um, it's nice because it just fits right on your finger like a ring. And I prefer Excel blades over Exacto. Excel tends to um, keep their their uh, tip sharper longer. Um, and then, because the second the second the tip breaks, the blade is basically useless for me and the work that I do. And then I just put them off to the side and then save them for another project that I don't need quite such precision for. Um, oops, I'm just gonna throw that there. And then handy dandy glue stick, just whatever you've got around is, you know, totally fine. School supplies are like two glue sticks for 60 cents at Target the other day. I was pretty excited. Um, I have a variety of just origami papers, drawing, colored drawing papers, um, just any kind of paper. And then I think it's really up to you to decide what textures you like. There's, this might sound weird, but you know, each paper has its own texture. And there's this very satisfying thing that happens the second you put the needle through the paper. And depending on the weight of it, how it's made, you know, different things happen, it has a different feel. And so that again goes to like my process versus product. Like I will crave to stitch a certain type of paper, <laughs> which might be kind of weird. Um, this is origami paper. I picked some thin ones, I think for this, this is, this is drawing paper, but um, I think this is like, uh, what is that called? Scrapbook paper. Um, yeah, just whatever you can find. And of course, like all collaging, pick up a newspaper, use some tissue paper, whatever you've got. But the thinner the paper, the more finickety, finickety, finicky it's going to be um, while you're stitching it. So I'm going to turn you back to my clean space here. I can't pick this up because it's nothing is adhered, but I think you can see well enough at this point. Um, so I usually like, depending on, on what I'm doing, for this example, I created an image, this happy little poppy flower. Um, but sometimes I'll just cut a shape and see where it leads me and be like, oh, wait, this kind of looks like an eye or a head or a whatever. Um, and that's where, like, I'll let it go. Sometimes it'll just, the piece will create itself. But again, that's totally, totally up to you. Um, and I wanted to show you a couple examples, like, of how I do things. So. So the stem being the base here, okay, trying to watch via screen so you can see what I'm doing. Well, there's definitely cat hair stuck to that. <laughs> Where is your cat? It came over here. Um, and I like to use just like a little bit of glue, just enough so that it's like, okay, I'm here, just to tack it down. Um, and then I grabbed this, this thread that kind of matches, of course it doesn't have to, it really does make a huge difference between when the stitching matches and when it's contrasting, um, how the piece turns out. But again, that's kind of all experimentation. So I'm just going to throw a little thread on here. And because this is on paper, with the intention usually being that it's going to be framed, depending on your comfort level, I don't like to put a knot at the end of my thread because then if it's up against some sort of mat board or backing, I don't want the little lump to come through. Yes, Cindy, exactly. I can see. <laughs> um, so here's where what I do might be different than what is intuitive because a lot of people ask how I get my stitches so precise and I cheat. I just make it really easy. So because you'd be coming up 
Uh, can you see my hands? Because I would be coming up behind here. I have no idea where it's going to go. So I, all, I always just poke my holes in the top layer first. So I'm like, okay, that's where I have a place to go now. And I can either feel or turn it around. Oh, this is lots of shadows. Um, okay. So then I have something to gauge. And if you're not like real familiar with sewing, by not putting a knot at the end of this, if you keep pulling, it'll pull right through. So what I do is usually just kind of put my finger on the end of the thread just to hold it there until I've got a couple stitches and then, then it will be secure. Um, so again, this is a place where some people like to do one way, some people do another. And I know I'm, I'm talking so much, but I feel like it's a funny story. So one of my friends was trying to, like, I was trying to teach her what I was doing. And she started sewing. And she's like, oh, this is just like, she's like, okay, I get it. It looks just like yours. And if, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Oh, I just did exactly what I said could happen. I just pulled it out. Um, and so she started sewing. She poked her holes, and this is where my level of control is just ridiculous. So my friend sews this piece, and this is obviously totally okay. This is just, again, my OCD. And this, like, this is an example of what her stitches looked like, which I think is really cool. Good for her, nice and loose, but where, the difference that I do that I thought was so obvious is that I like to just bring my thread to the edge of the paper and I like to try and keep it all at a 90 degree angle so I have all these little all of the stitches are perpendicular to the edge of whatever paper I'm sewing. It's always that little stuff that you never, like, you don't know that you do until somebody points it out. Um, so you can kind of see the difference. So you could make stitches that are really big, kind of like this, and like they could extend real far and you could use that for more aesthetic purposes. Um, or you could just not be as anal retentive as I am. <laughs> and you know, you don't need to be this tight, but so this is typically how I sew. Um, so like the background piece, like the, the piece furthest to the back, I will adhere right onto the back of like my index card or whatever surface I'm working on. Um, and then as another example, this is me talking with a needle in my mouth. Don't do this at home, kids. Um, so then, obviously, as you have more layers, it's gonna, the surface is gonna get thicker and thicker, and it makes it more difficult to stitch through, especially depending on the weight and the texture of your paper. So for this guy or gal, like I would take this, it's always easiest for me to stitch between two layers. Like if I can stitch only between two layers, I'm going to do that. Um, and then add another layer later. So I'll poke a few holes here so I know where I'm going. And I, oh, I didn't even take, or I didn't even glue this one. But normally I do. Like I never do this off the cuff like this. The glue, that little bit of glue helps so much. Um, and if you guys want to know how like OCD I can get about this, I shouldn't throw that word around. Um, I will even, what I really like to do because I like the way the back of it looks so much, I take the back of the string and I pull it through so that I stitch it so there aren't loose ends. And so that loose end, oh, that's my knuckle. 
I have lots of freckles. And so that loose end gets stitched right into the back here. And even more ridiculous, I like it to be three stitches long that my loose end is. It's just the sad, sad world I live in. I, I knew However, how OCD I, you were when I saw your studio. That's like mine when I clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like if you saw the rest of this place right now. Also now I share my studio with a 10 year old girl. So, um, but yeah, so then if you were to display or if I were to display this with the back visible, then there aren't going to be any loose threads around and people can see exactly the process of how that happens. Um, and I do the same thing when I finish a stitch. I'll take it and tuck the needle through so that it's not sticking out the other side. And then I can trim it. Oh, look, it's so nice and clean. Isn't it satisfying? <laughs> um, so yeah, so then I would take this and put, or I would do the eyes and the mouth, but I'm not gonna waste your time. Um, you can see how time consuming this would be if you were actually putting some effort into it. So I put a little bit of glue on there, just tack it down. And now when I go through to stitch it on, this is already sewn. And so I only have to stitch between these two layers, between the red and the white except when I get to this part here. So the more layers, the harder it's going to be to stitch. I do recommend um, as, as you use like heavier papers or you're using multiple layers and you're not able to only stitch between two, um, leather thimbles are amazing. And I like to just put it on my index finger so I can, you know, like shove it through. Um, every piece of art that I finish has at least one blood stain on the back. I'm not going to lie. It happens. If anybody ever needs my DNA, you eight people know that. Nine people. You can be like Jen Ross. Somebody find her art. Her DNA is all over the back of that. So, so I feel like this is kind of the essence of what I do. Um, and then, of course, if I wanted to stitch just for aesthetic, I would do the same thing. Where's my needle? Um, and like if I wanted to add maybe a blade of grass here, I would go, I would make that design ahead of time again so I know where I'm going. See, it looks real crafty, but it's not. It's all planned out. And then I just like using back stitches. which I think was really funny because when I started doing this, because the stitches look so in, or they are so intricate, everybody always thought I was a really good sewer and I'm not, or I wasn't at the time. Um, and then I later taught myself to embroider and now I'm all right at embroidering, but like, I don't know anything about sewing, but I, I do know these two stitches really well. And even though they're super simple, they can add a lot of texture and beauty and just like that little bit of something extra to finish off a collage or any sort of, I mean, you could do it with, you know, a painting too, but I just think it adds kind of a finishing touch in not too kitschy or crafty of a way, unless you want to. <laughs> then when you did this, face that was just stitching it wasn't paper involved in it was that mm -hmm. all back switched? yep it was how do you uh how do you get the design on the paper to do the just stitching part um i'll use a pencil Here, I'll, I'll, I'll look at you guys again hi friends um yeah i'll just use like a really hard pencil. Um, my favorite's an F. I don't know why I like F pencils. Um, so that it makes a light, but light and fine line that I can just go over. 
And something that I do really love about all artwork is, is seeing that kind of knitting, like the behind the scenes. So if there are pencil lines, I, I typically don't like to erase them. Um, I like to keep that little bit there because it's, it's so subtle. It's not distracting, but if somebody gets really intimate with it and they, you know, they have that moment where they're that close, I love being able to see like, oh, that's how that person, you know, you can see the steps. So I try and as, as much of a perfectionist as I am with some things, I like keeping that humanity there. So I don't know, does anybody have any questions about the process or anything? Did that tutorial make sense? I've never done that before. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was great. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that it made sense. <laughs> I could have watched you do that way longer. It's, it's <laughs> like the what, OCD like the also. I know, I've had people tell me that I should record just like when I'm making art and put it up on YouTube. Like people could fall asleep. Oh, oh, oh. The other thing is the sound of the paper uh, or the needle going through the paper. Oh my God. And you pull the thread <laughs> through. My partner even was sitting next to me one night and he's like, that is so satisfying, right? <laughs> so he just sat there and listened to me stitching one night. <laughs> it's so beautiful. That's like music. It's like a concert. So yeah. Yeah. You're Meanwhile, just, I'm wow. listening to my true crime podcasts about like brutal murders and terrible cults. It's like stabbing you know, things. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're calming all of us so thank you yes wow. wow wow thank you guys thank you so much if anybody has a question that you're asking and you, she's not answering you may be on mute <laughs> so check and if you don't have questions that's cool <laughs> <laughs> well you just brought a smile to my face and my heart and oh, thank what you. Who, who is that that's saying that? She's invisible. Her video's off. Oh, oh, it is? Oh. We can't see you. Oh, God. <laughs> it's my <laughs> first time. It's, no, it's so Holly D. You can absolutely, like, retain your privacy. <laughs> what did you say your name was? That's Holly Dickens. Now she's muted also. Oh, okay. I don't even see your name here. <laughs> so confused <laughs> are you back on the gallery view yes oh i see her yeah a lot of people have their video off so they yeah. Show up. yeah and i guess but um i'm really bad at that susan left did you know <laughs> did you know susan did you say did you go to school with susan marks um susan susan zelinsky and i oh, went to susan. like Oh. Susan, who's waving. Oh, I see. With Susan and Jeff. They're we're uh, we're from the the, <laughs> basically the same hometown. We went to the same undergrad university. We were roommates for a while. <laughs> uh -uh. Okay. And now we both live in Chicago uh -huh. and rarely see each other. <laughs> and Jeff commented on how we have the same inflection when we talk. And how, <laughs> like, the same, like, idiosyncrasies. You both say things like, <laughs> like all the things. I feel like when you were talking a few times, you said, like, and then all the things. <laughs> a very UP thing. But. Maybe it's a UP thing. We're from, yeah, we're I, from the UP. I, I think it very much so is a UP thing. Thank you so much for sharing so much. I mean, you really shared so much. Oh no, I'm, I appreciate yeah. it. And I'm so I excited. You're, yeah. With my rambling. Oh, I hope it wasn't. Too no, much. no. You, you didn't was, ramble. I'm, uh, I'm like, I'm on the rooftop and I finally had a connection. So, um, yeah, I can't wait. I just joined and I can't wait to for the next one. Jen, come back. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Back. Thank, yeah, you. You can, you Thank you. Thank you. And we all Please. have those technology Yay. issues. <laughs> Uh, so we have a we have a micro meetup next week. Uh, it's very exciting. Okay. We're, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do live collaborative uh, comic drawing online. Wow. So we can all, it's magic. We can all see each other. 
and draw it together. So um, check okay. that one out. It, uh, okay, I'll have it figured out by then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, I'll send a link, sign up. We'll, we'll take you over there. I'll walk you guys through how to do some of that. We did, uh, we kicked off with that one in July. So we're coming back to, to it again because oh. it was so much fun. Um, well, I signed up. I signed up so now I can come to all of them. Excellent. I'm a member now. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You just got to find a free one and get there. Um, and, I'll uh, go to all of them. <laughs> I really don't have a life, so this is my new fun life. We all life. have less of a life than we had a <laughs> few months ago. <laughs> yeah, oh, is this to, really uh, your first Zoom meeting? How yes, is... my first Zoom. My first wow. Zoom. And oh, I see Linda. Hi, Linda. <laughs> Hi, Linda. <laughs> Sweet. Woo Linda's party, right? <laughs> Woo -hoo. Right. Linda Lee is thank awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, I just thank, thank you. So you. I wanted to just say that I, I love the backs. Aww. When you were talking about like lusting after some looser style, it's all on the back. You've already <laughs> right? got it. the other side. I, I think know, I just, I need all in double glass. They were fabulous. I yeah. need to have the courage to just like flip it over and be like, yeah, this you know, is nobody how... needs to see the front because the back <laughs> is where it's no, at. The back is very <laughs> cool. Very cool. Then it looks like you're on some island. I am. What the yeah. fuck? Dearborn Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, got this, I can't wait. Okay, I have go these ahead. frames that have two sides on them. Nice. Oh, Look at you. you guys? Oh, yeah, they should put them in there. Oh, yeah. God. See, then I don't need courage. Then it's just like everything. <laughs> <laughs> Find the right product. <laughs> I do love that little mini frame. You'll have to, I'll have to look that up. Uh, these are from Every Michael. time I say somebody needs to show me something, I'm like, oh, I can just poodle that. <laughs> I love that with the back and the front showing, though. That would be and cool. it's also iridescent glass. So. Ooh. This is what the micro meals are about. Shine things. <laughs> and you can e even go smaller. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot to tell you how weird, you know, when you do the demo, nobody says anything because they're all like, so cool. <laughs> oh, no, no. I saw the demo, but uh, I, w I was unmuted. I didn't know that. Hey, can I ask you, Mr. CS Chicago, who you are? Uh, I am George Berlin. I'm the one who George. Uh, cool, I man. organized these for C3 Chicago. Oh. So I'm the program's director. And you are the man. Good. Cindy okay, and great. Uh, Linda and Carolyn and other people here are part of that. Also. Oh, great. He's Mr. Wonderful. Man. Yeah, he's Mr. Man. <laughs> <laughs> great spirit. Wow. Love all you guys. Yeah. Really great fun. What a fun night. Best night I've had in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> this was super fun. I, oh, super I'm fun. really glad that... Yeah, you, you asked me to do this. Thank you should you. show people more often, Jen. You, your stuff was great. Jen, you're really good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank I'm not you. Just saying that could be nice. So, <laughs> sure, Jen, sure. how are you? How are you able to show your work? Do you do sh shows like art shows or craft shows or anything? Minimally, like that? I. I mean, this was before COVID, when they actually I mean, did that stuff. Pre-COVID, <laughs> I've. You know, I've exhibited in a, a handful of um, like emerging artist shows. I've never put much effort into marketing myself. Um, I'm so bad at technology. I'm not good at documenting my work, as you can see. Like, I don't know how to professionally shoot pieces, how, like, my website is outdated like four years. <laughs> so, um so it's yeah like i think at this point i'm just selling kind of on the side and as of the last six months i've had a convenient and steady stream of commissions coming in for a variety of media um but yeah so instead of showing it's more been you know, making and selling. So I'd love to show more. I just don't, that's part of the, like the art scene that I just do not understand, don't know how to get into and don't really have even the drive to. Like I've found my calling being an art therapist. I will never stop being mm -hmm. an artist, but like the work I do is so emotionally draining that to come home at the end of the night and be like, oh, 
got to find a way to get in that gallery is just not mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. to me anymore. I just want to come home and, and create. Honestly. It's a really long answer. <laughs> So for no, your art therapy, answer. are you doing this kind of art or just or painting or drawing or what are you Oh, doing? we do everything. Um, we do, I mean, I, I don't think I've gotten anybody to stitch paper yet. I work with older adults exclusively um, and I'm employed full time. So I work with the same people um, and because they are older adults, we run into a lot of dexterity and vision problems. So people who used to do a lot of embroidery and knitting and sewing, um, I have found ways to modify those processes. We do a lot of weaving instead, which you know is, can be a lot simpler. Um, so we do, I mean, everything. Wow. Bless your heart. Thank you for, thank you for that. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well, there's a wonderful woman named Linda Levy who, <laughs> who can help you move it forward with some type of marketing and advertising. There's, other, yeah, there's, there's solutions. Jen, we'll yes, there are, Jen. Jen, there, Jen, there are. You don't need to do it yourself. Um, Linda is like the most amazing person you can work with to kind of kind of get it off your plate and then let her move it forward for more um, visibility. Um, L -E if you want to do that, yes. Linda Levy. I'm right here, honey. I'm right oh, here. She's here. Oh, I, I thought the name sounded familiar. Oh, hi. Yeah, yeah. She's a superstar. Yes, yes. If you, you want to help me show some work, I would love it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Very kind. And if you want to get in into some gallery kind of work, I will I'll be in touch with you. Um, I yeah. Some gallery I mean, I'd yeah, love to yeah. talk to you about that more. Sure. Sure. Yeah, um, it's time. I think it's time. It I was going to say, George, yeah. is there like, do you have, in case anybody did want to extend the conversation, or if I wanted to reach out to maybe Linda or somebody, um, I have all their or to thank How do Holly for you? all of yeah. the do, do you have a Do you have a website, Jen? Oh, sure. It's absolutely useless. Um, but I do. Does it have your phone number on it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay. Post the name of your website. Thing, yeah. Is it JenRoss.com? Put, put it in the chat, Jen. Oh, it's JenRoss.com? It's JenRossIllustrations.com. Oh, illustration. And all of my okay. social media is JenRoss Ellipsis. Oh, chat. Oh, there's like five messages here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's what yeah. you're talking about. JenRossIllustrations.com. Okay. Hey, and what is your oh uh, oh good great good good i didn't know it ended up with an s okay good um i'm, I'm, I'm working off my little phone here uh jen ross ellipsis okay good great jen ross. the eyes kind of going right yeah. And you can save that whole chat too if you do go down to the bottom, the three dots okay, nice. on the bottom of it. Oh, you guys are so smart. Okay. We've just got so far. The ellipses. Or the ellipses. Yeah. <laughs> How do wait? I can save the whole chat. Yeah, yeah go down uh, yeah. to the bottom file where it says file, and there's an ellipse to the right of it. Click on that. There's a thing that says file. Oh, I'll open up save at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the chat window. Are you on an iPad, Jen? I am. I don't even own a computer. <laughs> That's okay. That's all I've That's got. All right. It may be in a different okay. place then, but yeah. Well, are you on an iPad, Cindy? No, I'm on the laptop tonight. Oh, so I can't be of help. I could send an email to you of everybody who is here if you would like, or specific yes. people. Cool. Yes, please. Well, please and you please. could Let's you could join C three, and you could get to know all of us, and we could all help you. Better, better than you would ever like. <laughs> I need to. so much help; it's not even funny. <laughs> you well, can ask my do. therapist. <laughs> we need the art therapy, and you need our help. Yeah, yeah. That's right, Cindy. We're all messed up in different ways. <laughs> right, yeah. in the best ways. 
<laughs> in the best ways, yes. Well, the most creative ways, at least. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody. This was so much fun. I really appreciate all of your support yeah, and your um, questions and your oh, interest. Thank you. Did I mention we recorded this whole thing? So if you want to see your demo, I can send it to you also. Thank you. Time. Yay. Hi, Jen. Put that on our site, George. Bye. Bye, bye Jen. Jen. Thanks. Susan said bye, bye too. Jen. Thank you, Jen. Thank yeah, you. Thank bye. you. Be in touch. Uh, bye, guys. Cool. I'm so happy I have your information. You were amazing. Superstar. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're all leaving now. Bye. <laughs> Bye.